Hello, afternoon, YouTube fellas. Uh, we've been working on our mill. Um, we ordered a bunch of new parts. Um, we did get the update installed on the uh, Masso finally, and we've been playing with it a little bit. We ordered a bunch of new tooling, uh, all from uh, Tormach there, their TTS system for the R8 collets. Uh, we did get the tool setter block so we can set tool heists. Uh, the wrenches, uh, we got the ER32 wrenches set up. We got their flat uh, R8 collet there. Uh, so we can get tool heist exact. And this is the part that you can set it in right here. And it's a one-way bearing so you can put your tooling in and out without having to be in the mill. Holds it still for the wrenches. So we uh, we broke out the uh, dial indicator there, the mag base. And set it up on the spindle on the tool on this tool right here on the spindle and we found that we was about six thousandths out of round on that tool on run out so we got to check in and where this sets up against right here it sets up against the bottom of the spindle we found that the spindle had uh, had some burrs in it up on the bottom so here we are we're getting ready to set up. We've got it set up here to, uh, we are going to physically turn the bottom of the spindle. So, uh, we're going to take off with that here in just a minute. But, uh, we just wanted to show you guys what we're going to do. And, yeah, I'm sure I'm going to get some criticism on this one. But, it's the easiest way I know to make the spindle good and flat on the bottom. True to the table. So, uh... The machine's all been trimmed in. It's within a half a thousandths on six inches both ways. So we're going to cut this real quick. So here we go. Um, we're going to start the spindle. We're going to run it at around 500 R RPM. And that's an M3 over here on the screen. Uh, M3 command. We're already at 500 RPM. And here we go. We're going to start the spindle. Okay, now we got the spindle running. We're gonna go back to the jog screen. Okay, now that we're on the jog screen, we are set up with the uh, hand wheel. The MPG is working now with that new update. We got the new, uh, just a word of advice, buy a 24 volt hand wheel. I burnt mine up and it wasn't even in the software yet. Uh, I had to order a new one and put back in it. So here we are, we're gonna get set up for uh to cut this and i'm pretty sure that i'm right at uh spec so we're gonna go up on the z-axis all right now we're gonna run over to the x and we're gonna cut this puppy here we go There it is. We cut her off flat. We'll come back for just a finish pass. Clean up. And we might as well go one more time for just good measure. Make sure we ain't got no roughness. All right. And there we are. We, uh, we did machine the bottom of the spindle. I wasn't sure if it'd be too hard, but uh, it seemed to work okay. That's just a Char's brand half inch tooling that I got from my little lathe. And I thought, well, that'd be the squarest and easiest way to make the mill flat on the bottom, other than trying to stone it or get the burrs, just the little burrs and stuff off. So, well, fairly there's, there it was. Uh, like I say, we got the MPGs all working. We got all the new tooling stuff to try. Uh, we got the dial, this, the, the Z height gauge to uh, do tool offsets. We're still learning on that part. I say we've never been machinists. Me and Brian both we're all, we've been electricians 90% uh, of our lives, and uh, we're not experienced tool makers or or any any knowledge of CNC really until about a year ago when we started watching. Uh, 
Saunders Machine Work, uh, John there, he really inspired us basically to do what we're doing. Uh, A-bomb on the machining, A-bomb 79 on the machining part in general. I sit and watch his videos all the time on and how he actually sets up all the different stuff that he does. And I'd love to have the lathe and stuff he gets to run there, that huge, huge lathe. So, um... I'm going to put a few pictures on the end of the video to show you what we worked on over the weekend. Uh, we are going to add to the shop. The shop right now is uh, 20 by 44. We're adding a 32 by 44 addition to the shop so we can actually have a place to start putting stuff. Um, I'll add a few pictures here at the end of the video just to show you a little bit of what we've done so far. Uh, we got all the dirt work and concrete prep ready yesterday and Friday. and. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to get some room. All right, well, here we are. We're going to go ahead and shut the spindle back off. Um, it's Control-M, brings up the MDI commands, and an M5 is going to stop the spindle. So, there we go. We'll see you guys next time. So I come back real quick. Um, after we cut the spindle a little bit later, we decided to do a, a run-out check real quick again. And to see how much better it was, we were at six thousand, six and a half thousands before I cut the face of the spindle um, with the TTS system. So I went ahead and uh, chucked the uh, same tool that we had in, and after cutting the face, I torqued it with the normal three-quarter inch wrench, torqued it back down to just about the same as what I've always used this thing at, and with it drawn back up to the mill now with the true face to the table, with it cut. We, here's uh, here's the dial indicator running. We're running around 50 uh, 50 RPM on the spindle, and there you can see the gauge. If it's moving, I can't tell it. So you can see it there. It is definitely uh, rock solid on run out now. Sorry, I got a little close. But, uh, yeah, it looks uh, way better. I say we're sitting there running a spindle at about 50 hertz or so, or 50 RPM, just to check that run out. My phone will straighten up here in a minute. Sorry. All right. Well, anyway, I just thought I'd come back and show you the results of uh, trimming the end of that spindle. Say we went from six and a half thousandths down to virtually none. Um, all right, guys. Well, I'm out of here. Um, like, subscribe. Give me some comments of what you think of what I did there. I'd be interested to hear them. All right. Thanks, man. Bye.